Hello everyone, my name is Insect Isaac, and today I'll be showing you part one of my insect collection. Now, here is a Luna Moth. It is a male. It's the most colorful Luna Moth in all of them. The rest are more of an, a paler emerald green color. This one has more orange, almost lime color. And these are giant silk moths. I usually raise them. There's this one that's bleached. At first I thought it was albino, but I saw that there was a light right above it. I could have bleached its um, the scales. It does that to moth. As you can see here, I got a polyphemus moth. And the ones on top are all withered. Except for this one, who's much darker and has more color in its wings. So yeah, these are luna moths. This one is a male. The other male is up here, and the rest of them are females. Of course, not that one. You can see by the feather antennae that it's a male. Same thing with here. You can see it's got feather antennae and this one, this female has more of a straight, less feather antennae. And they use these feather shaped antennae to detect pheromones that the females will emit. And they will, like a sonar, um, uh, find their way to the female, then mate. And these things don't live very long. They live about a week and then they die so they can't even eat, they don't even have mouth parts so their life as a caterpillar is to eat as much to store fat then they go in their chrysalis or cocoon and then they hatch as butterflies and they have about a week to find a mate reproduce and then they die down here I've got a big pulper sphinx moth and a smaller I'm a sphinx moth from France here it's a European um, all of these should be from, most of these are from North America and Canada. The others, some are from, I've got one from Southern America and one from France. And yeah, so this is a big pulpler sphinx moth. As you can see, it's pretty large. It's got the largest bar body inside of my collection. As you can see. Up here I've got polyphemus moths with, in the previous video. I explain the polyphemus moth. This is the female one that you would have seen in the polyphemus moth video. And they called them polyphemus because of the eye spots, looking like the Cyclops polyphemus from Greek mythology. Um, yeah, now here I've got Samia Cynthia. This one I raised as well with Luna moths. Um, it's really beautiful, got a nice pink edge. Just right here, almost fleshy. The rest is about mm, cinnamon and creamy colors. Nice transparent spots, just like this one. This one is pretty beautiful. It's a white zigzag pattern almost going through the wings. I also have the same spot as the Cynthia Moth. And these patterns right here are really transparent. You can see through them. Well, most of my Silk Moths here have them. The Luna Moth has little tiny transparent spots here. The polyphemus moth have a bit larger and these ones this one has the largest transparent spot on its wings. Anyway, I've got another sphinx moth here. This one because of its condition I couldn't identify it enough. Um, it's a sphinx moth. It's from it's a hornworm moth. So it's either a tomato or tobacco hornworm and this one I already found dead. It was already dead, so you can see its wings are in the best condition. And I actually put it in a relaxing chamber for it to relax its wings so I could spread it again. I'll make a video on that soon, by the way. Uh, I got a gypsy moth. This is a female. They can't actually fly because they do not have muscles that are developed enough to uh, lift their weight. It's not really pretty. It's a they just lay eggs and big patches of fur on trees and damages the trees so gypsy moths aren't really my favorite but um, males and females are pretty easy to raise especially from pupae that you can find in trees um, little holes and cracks inside tree bark you can find lots of pupae and you can then raise them um, then up here I got some gallium sphinx moths these two are very beautiful I've got a 
Snowbeard Clearwing and a Hummingbird Sphinx Moth that I both caught. Beautiful specimens as well. I have here a Blinded Sphinx. I've got lots of those. This one I caught when I was alive. And these three others were actually caught when they were dead. And I went to a national park where they actually had lights with little cages under the lights. Like, uh, there were long light bulbs that would run through the mirror in the bathrooms of the camping site. And then under there would be little cages, and these would, like, accumulate in the cages. Same thing with these ones, three polyphemus moths and that luna moth. These one and that gallium sphinx moth, same thing as this one. I'll found them in the little cages under the lights. So, I'll definitely go check that every year. The specimens won't be as fresh, but I think that if I go at around the time where the specimens, the moths hatch and um, spread their wings, and I go a bit after that, so for giant silk moths, like Luna moth and Polyphemus moth about June, maybe I can find some live specimens that are stuck in there and maybe free them and let them live and stuff like that. We've got some underwing moss over here. So this is a beautiful sweetheart underwing. And this is a orange, much more orange underwing. Very beautiful as well. And of course I've got some little tinier moss here. Little regular ones they will find uh, pretty commonly. And yeah, so we've got about three categories. We've got um, giant silk moss up here and here. We've got sphinx moths over here. And we have also um, regular moths like the gypsy moths and these tiny guys. So yeah, I got also some uh, cocoons that I have from raising them. This is a luna moth cocoon, this is a polyphemus moth cocoon, this is a cynthia moth cocoon. And I should have one right here, so a uh, polyphemus moth and luna moths. Um, these, are, these are already hatched, so I'm just going to leave them there. Yep. So yeah, I got some pupae who didn't make them, who didn't make it. So this, these two up here are polyphemus moth pupae, and um, the sender who sent these actually put moisture, too much moisture, and it started growing fungus on the pupa, and they were all dead. And this is a luna moth pupa who didn't hatch after about a year inside a pupa, and so I took it and put it in the collection. Anyway, this is it for my moth collection, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.